Hello everyone, let's go ahead and start off with algebraic operations with vectors. Now that we have a pretty good understanding of how two-dimensional and three-dimensional vectors can be created and represented, we will now want to go ahead and think about the algebraic operations that we can use with those vectors. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we'll look, uh, we'll start off with the properties themselves from the algebraic property. Uh, we'll talk about the geometric interpretation and we'll talk about the name of that property. Okay, so here's the first property that we have. It's the a vector plus b vector is equal to the b vector plus the a vector. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the geometric interpretation of that, let's just take a look at these two parts separately. Here's the a vector plus the b vector. So here's the a vector plus the b vector. So what we have is the original starting point, the ending point, and that is going to be represented by the resultant r vector. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at this part here, it says take the b vector first and add the a vector to it. So here's the b vector and there's the a vector. And notice that what we have is we have the exact same resultant vector. Now, being that the resultant for this side as well as this side are exactly the same in the sense that they have the same direction as well as the same magnitude, then we know for a fact that these two are, in fact, equal. So the name for this property is uh, that vector addition is commutative. Okay? So we know then that vector addition is commutative because this property is hold, holds true and the geometric interpretation of what that property looks like is there. So let's take a look at a second property. The second property says, let's take a look at taking the a vector plus the b vector first, then adding a c vector. Is that the same thing as taking the b vector plus the c vector first and then adding the a vector to it? So let's take a look at this left-hand side here. Here is the a vector plus the b, ve b vector. So that blue vector there represents the resultant of this part here. And then if we add the c vector to that, then what we come up with is the original starting point to the final ending point. This is going to be what your resultant vector is going to look like. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the right-hand side. The right-hand side says take the b vector plus the c vector first. So here's the b vector, here's the c vector. Notice that they're exactly the same. And notice that the resultant is going to be this blue vector here, which is the b vector plus the c vector. And then add the a vector to it. So here's the a vector. So starting from here, going to here, going from here, going to there. And notice that the resultant is starting from here and going to there. So notice that if we compare the resultant for these two, these two sides of the equation as well, then we come up with this, a, a resultant vector that is going to have the same direction and the same magnitude. So therefore, we know that these two are, in fact, equal. So this property is the associative property. And we know that vector addition is going to be associative as well. Now, these other two here, are going to deal with vector addition in particular and it's looking at what the identity element is and what the inverse element is. Now if you can think back to working with matrices, hopefully that will ring a bell as to what we mean by the identity element and the inverse element. Okay? But let's go ahead and continue with this from a vector perspective with regards to addition. If we go ahead and take the a vector plus the zero vector, that is going to be exactly the same thing as the zero vector plus the a vector because both of these are the a vector. So notice that being that the zero vector when added to any particular vector is just going to give you the vector that it's been added to, we call that the identity element for vector addition. Okay? Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the opposite of the a vector and we add it to the a vector, notice that we come out with the identity element and if we commute that as well, then we know we still come up with the identity element for vector addition. Therefore, we know then that the opposite of the a vector is going to be called the inverse element for vector addition. Okay? Now, this last property here is a little bit different. It's just going to be taking a look at the magnitudes of different vectors and whether or not the order of operations is going to matter. And from what we have here, it, it, it does not. Now, we'll go ahead and take a look a little bit more as to what the geometric interpretation of this. But I invite you to take a look at this yourself and think about how this works out. And we'll take any questions in class the next time that we meet with regards to this particular property. Now, now that we have an idea of what's happening with vectors and vector addition and scalar multiplication in particular, 
one of the things that we'll need to be able to do is we'll need to be able to solve for particular vectors using algebraic operations that we're very familiar with because we know that the commutative, associative, and we also know that some of these other properties are true. So let's say, for example, that we have 3 times the x vector is going to be equal to the a vector. How do you solve for the x vector? Well, the way that we do that is if this was uh, normal algebra and these were variables and not vectors, we would just divide both sides by 3. But the thing is, though, is that there is no such thing as scalar division without, with vectors. So what that means then is that we need to go ahead and just be sure that our notation is going to be consistent with the operations that we have with regards to vectors, which is limited right now to vector, um, vector addition as well as scalar multiplication. Okay? So what we need to do then is we need to write the vector x as one-third of vector a, one-third times vector a, and we cannot write it this way. It's very similar to what we had with matrices. So just be very careful about your notation there. Okay, so there you go. These are the properties that we have. The commutative property, the associative property, the identity and the inverse element for vector addition, as well as this extra one here with regards to the magnitudes of vectors. Now, we went ahead and took a look at the geometric interpretation, especially of these two right here commutative and the associative vectors of properties, uh, I invite you as well as ask that you go ahead and think about how you want to prove those algebraically. Remember at the beginning of the chapter, one of the things that I stress is that you need to be able to have a geometric as well as an algebraic understanding of vectors. If you have both of those things going for you, you have no problem with understanding vectors once we get to some of the more difficult things uh, within subsequent chapters. Okay, so we'll go ahead and see how you do. Again, prove those algebraically as well. If we're not exactly sure how that works out, we'll go ahead and take a look at that in class the next time that we meet. Okay, so see you next time. Bye-bye.